Greetings Indie Warriors and welcome to I Dream of Indie. My name is Old Gamer Joe and today we have a fascinating piece of gaming history to look at. Clockwork Aquario on the Nintendo Switch. What makes this game unique from the hundreds of other games we've featured on this channel over the past two years is the fact that it is a 30 year old lost relic that's been dug up after all this time and with the help of strictly limited games alongside the original developers, it's been completed and is finally seeing release for the first time. So Clockwork Aquario has an almost unbelievable history behind it, but the actual story within the game itself is far less compelling. When strange events begin taking place in different areas across the world of Aquario, we learn that the evil Dr. Hangyo is behind it all in an attempt to take over the world. As you would expect, three heroes now have to rise to the occasion, Huck Lundo, Ellie Moon, and Gush the Robot. Here's a little piece of advice for you, try not to pick Gush the Robot. He's not my favorite. Being a classic style arcade game, there's not that many controls to worry about in Clockwork Aquario, with the characters all more or less feeling the same from one another. You can smack enemies with a standard attack, and then you have the option of walking forward to grab that enemy and toss it at others to create somewhat of a combo. The game does feature a scoring system, so as you take out enemies and pop balloons through the game's five different levels, you'll also be able to earn additional extra lives based on your performance. That's pretty much all there is to it, going through these levels, taking out enemies by tossing and jumping on them and performing some light platforming. The level design itself isn't particularly well crafted, but you do have a neat boss encounter at the end of each world, and if you're playing the game in local co-op, which is an option, you'll get a fun little mini game in between the levels. This mini game involves trying to pop all of your partner's balloons before they pop yours, and honestly, I felt like it almost could have been a fun puzzle game or versus game of some kind in itself. Clockwork Aquario features an easy, normal, and hard mode, with the main difference being the amount of credits that you'll have within those modes. There is an arcade mode that will need to be unlocked by completing the game once, and once you're able to access that, you'll have unlimited credits along with the ability to check out an arcade service mode, which is a really cool touch. Outside of that though, you're able to boot into the bonus minigame from the main menu, and that's pretty much it, so most players are going to see the entirety of this one within a couple of hours hours tops. Undeniably, Clockwork Aquario is a fascinating piece of gaming history, but is it actually a good game? Well, in my opinion, it's just okay. The level design again is a bit lacking here without too many surprises or challenges. The two-player mode can be a bit frustrating as you'll be getting in the way of each other, and the game just really kind of lacks any real energy. You have one main power-up, a star attack, but it isn't all that exciting to utilize, and because the story feels so tacked on and cookie cutter, likely due to this being an unfinished game to be fair, I wasn't drawn to any of the characters or villains within the game. It was cool to go through this one a couple times just knowing all it went through to actually exist, but really that was it. I felt no strong urge or connection to play it over and over again like many of the other classic arcade games that I've enjoyed over the years. Visually, Clockwork Aquario does have a nice art style to it. It holds up well. The pixel art is just as endearing today as it would have been those 30 years ago. Bright colors, creative looking enemy designs, and some wonderful animations too. You've got some crazy spring-loaded almost toy-like looking enemies, fish robots throughout the game. I thought it was very imaginative looking. Another nice touch is the ability to use a CRT filter which gives you that classic tube TV look and I thought that was pretty great as well. One thing I'm always appreciative of is the ability to listen to a game's soundtrack on the main menu and that is exactly the case here with Clockwork Aquario. Shinshi Sakamoto's soundtrack is pretty good. It has a classic Sega-like quality to it. Quirky sound Sounds accompanied by a steady hi-hat and driving beats throughout the game bring some energy. Still, there were some annoying sound effects to be dealt with as well, particularly from Gush the Robot, because, uh, well, he makes some irritating sounds to say the least. Still, despite Gush's best efforts, I ultimately enjoyed both the classic arcade look and sound of this game. Well, the fact that Clockwork Aquario exists at all is, in my opinion, a good thing. As someone who loves and appreciates game history, I'm still blown away that a 30-year-old lost game was able to find new life, and I imagine this brings a lot of closure to the people that worked so hard on it all those years ago. From that standpoint, I think Clockwork Aquario is amazing. It is also a game that I had more fun learning about than I did actually playing. Even if it's not an amazing game in terms of how it actually plays, I think enough folks like myself will be thrilled to have it in their collections based on the history alone. <laughs>
Thank you so much for watching the latest video from I Dream of Indie. We would now like to take a moment to pay tribute to our great indie warriors who support us through channel memberships. Bill T, Christian Cruz, Kevalo, Mitchell Hall, Chris Jackson, Nathan Moore, Adriana Amato, CJR, C Coil, Skepticism, Haley, Julian Colbus, Jen Rose, Jesse, CPM, Bunny, JRS the Eighth, Ray Lynn, and Marky Mint. Thank you so much for all you do for independent developers, publishers, and for I Dream of Indie. Everybody else, please head down to the description box below. Let's defeat the gaming echo chamber and bring a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming.